Yo, what's up? It's Yo Rumi. So this is going to be a follow-up video on the first video I did where I walked you through a uh, marketplace um, user and listing optimization uh, guide. So um, assuming you've seen that and you've onboarded your first kind of marketplace users and uh, optimize the listings. Now this is an actual second guide and this is gonna be more about how you can support your marketplace and some of the bookings or transactions that are taking place. So that way everyone has the best experience possible using your marketplace. Now a few things that I do wanna mention is um, this is kinda like a guide or framework that I created after uh, operating studio time for a few years and it getting to the scale that it's at. So uh, I kind of, I'm using studio time as an example uh, to walk you through this and for some kind of context to it. Um, but this guide can be generally applied to the earliest stage marketplaces and even more specifically share tribe based marketplaces. So there are some mentions in here as far as specifics on um, how to reference the admin panel in the different, uh, the different states of that. So once again, that is a specific uh, just for some context for studio time, which is a share tribe flex marketplace. So let's just jump right into it. So um, in order to best support your marketplace and just make sure everyone has the best experience possible, um, I do suggest kind of, um, if you don't use this exact kind of like guide or framework, is just to constantly kind of monitor all the states of transactions um, that are taking place uh, within your marketplace. So that is actually step one. So step one here in the guide that I've identified is to review all the transaction states and that's gonna be under the manage and then transactions tab on the admin panel of your marketplace. So I'm gonna jump to the, so this is the studio time kind of test uh, or development environment. So this is our app for the actual admin panel. So you'll see right here the specific mention as far as like our under the manage the transactions kind of tab. We see over here all the different transactions that are initiated and this is on our, uh, on our test environment. So we see the last transitions right here. So what we're looking for, um, say for instance, if it's the, you know, the morning and you're the founder of your marketplace and you see that you have some kind of new users signed up, you then wanna jump over to the transactions and just see, are there any new transactions that have taken place on your marketplace? So this is where you'd see that right here and then sort of by the most recent. So that's step number one. Now, number two is to see if any requests um, have, or booking requests have been uh, submitted. And if so, if they're outstanding and haven't been accepted, denied, or applied to. Now on studio time, uh, all booking requests automatically expire after 24 hours if they go uh, unanswered. So that means not accepted or denied or applied to. Um, so your marketplace might have that, it might not. But um, what you wanna do is just see if there are any requests that, that are pending and they haven't been replied to within a few hours. Um, if so, then you might wanna go down here and see uh, email number one. And um, that is an email to, that you can send to the studio and so that's of course the supply side that has a listing. So that way you can then um, basically give them a heads up to either accept or deny the request timely. So that's actually this first email template. So I just made some templates right here. So you can actually use these templates to send this to your supply or for instance, music studios in this case. So this is actually the email that we send to our studios. So you start with Nate, you know, hey, the first name. Um, and then we say, we just noticed that you had your first booking request pending on studio time. Please be sure to accept or deny um, this as soon as possible so that you can maintain a, a timely response rate on our platform. Also, as soon as you accept a booking request, please be sure to send back a message to the artist confirming the session, any specific details they need to know in advance, and then also send the address, any instructions for arrival, and also a contact number to reach you at just in case. Doing this helps make, uh, make sure all bookings go as smoothly as possible and that everyone has the best experience using studio time. Thanks for doing so in advance. We're here to help, so let us know if you need anything. Now, a few kind of notes on this um, in some uh, particulars. So the first, of course, is to let them know they have a request. And the second is to let them know what to do. So that is to accept or deny it. And the reason why is that we want to maintain a timely response rate on our platform. So all users and all listings on studio time, actually we display a response rate in time and that's to help artists know uh, just some kind of expectation of uh, when they can expect a reply from the studio. Now, after that, what we do is we go ahead and mention uh, what they need to do as soon as they accept the request. So when they do, we want them to send back a personal message confirming the session with the artist so that way they know that, hey, the studio accepted it and they're confirming it. Also sending back any specific details that the artist might need to know because they might not uh, see that from the listing 
They might not get that from the automatic confirmation that we send them and the details that are in that. Um, and then also too, is to send back the address, any specific instructions for arrival and a contact number just in case. Now, you might be wondering why we uh, suggest sending that since that uh, information is displayed on the booking confirmation screen uh, on both users dashboards once a booking is accepted. Now, sometimes studios enter that information on their listing and they might forget to update it and that could change or there could be something, for instance, uh, for instance, like parking instructions. So a lot of studios in LA um, have very particular instructions about parking and that's not gonna be part of the address. So this is uh, something we kind of learned the hard way over the course of a few years on studio time is for the, just to suggest this, so that way, if this does apply to them, that they can send it back. Now also too, a lot of the studios, um, you know, of course they are uh, made for sessions. So people recording in the studio. So something we also learned is that when, uh, you know, there are existing sessions and say, for instance, the studio manager or the engineer that rents the studio on studio time, um, you know, that is the listing owner. Sometimes they're actually in a session and they can't check their phone the whole time. So the artist that has a session coming up that they booked through studio time might need to get a hold of them. So that's why we suggest sending a contact number and we don't run, really run the risk of any kind of like platform slippage with this or disintermediation since they've already confirmed the request uh, or confirmed the booking and the payment's been captured through our platform. So hopefully that provides a little bit of a kind of context behind this email and why we send this specific email to the studios um, to let them know to uh, accept, a request, accept or deny a request. So that is gonna be this uh, second. So now the third is to review all the accepted states. So you can see on the admin panel, any uh, not just pending bookings, but uh, what we do is we reference all the accepted bookings. And what we wanna do is see uh, every single booking request. Did the studio immediately message the artist back and send that kind of confirmation message in the, those specific instructions we just covered in that email template. Now, if they didn't, which I mentioned right here, um, then we need to make sure that they do. So you can see this too right here. So email studios that have accepted their first request and didn't message, uh, that we didn't message them prior about sending that information. So there's kind of two different use cases here. So the first is the first time a studio has a pending request and they're just not super responsive, right? So then of course we would send them that first email template. Now there could also be a use case of a studio received a request and they replied to it and they accepted it very timely before we could then uh, see that on the admin panel and send them that message. Now, if that's the case, we can just skip the whole part to let them know about to accept or deny it. And we just kind of modify the message and we'll send the specific instructions that they need to send once they uh, confirm the booking or, or accept the booking. So that's gonna be the second email. So it's like, hey, and then their name, we noticed that you accepted your first booking on studio time. As soon as you accept the booking request, please be sure to also send back a message to the artist confirming the session, any specific details you need to know in advance then also send the address, any instructions for arrival and a contact number to reach out just in case. And then we say doing this uh, helps make sure all bookings go as smoothly as possible and that everyone has the best experience using studio time. Thanks for doing so in advance. We're here to help. So let us know if you need anything. Now this message goes a long way and we actually send this one typically uh, a little bit more often than the first one because studios typically reply to the booking request pretty timely and that's to accept or deny it. So we actually, this is going to be a common message we send them. Um, it's very straightforward. They typically actually do this and they then uh, send this message back uh, via directly through our platform messaging to the artist. Um, this also goes a long way uh, for us uh, to let them know why we're doing this, which is to make sure everyone has the best experience possible. And then we also let them know we're here in, in the event that they need any help. Now, this is the message we sent to studios the first booking. Now, as they get their second, third, fourth, and fifth bookings, we don't really need to send the same message because after they do it once, they typically understand how our platforms work and what uh, they need to do in order to make sure everyone has the best experience possible for every single booking going forward. Sometimes maybe, you know, five or six bookings down the road, maybe they forget to do this um, and that person hasn't booked to that studio before. In that case, we'll kind of still monitor the transactions and then we'll just send them a reminder, just say, uh, kind of modifying this and just uh, basically saying, hey, you know, we noticed that you've uh, had a few bookings now, hope they're, you know, going, uh, you know, going well through our platform. We just want to make sure that you're still sending this information and then we can kind of go into the specifics right here of that information that they need to send. Um, so we do do that too. Um, so that is going to be the third step. Now, the fourth step of this is to review the admin panel and review all the completed bookings 
and send an email to the studios just to make sure that they had a great uh, session, first session through studio time uh, from that booking, and then also prompt them to leave a review for the users. So that's gonna be this email right here. So this is the third email template. So what we say is, hey name, just wanna check in following your first booking on studio time and see how it went. Also, if you haven't left a review for the artist, please, uh, please be sure to do so. I need to modify this as we're uh, trying to quickly build up reviews on our platform. And then thanks and glad that we can start generating bookings for you and revenue already. Now we do send an uh, automated email through the platform to prompt them to leave a review for both sides. But uh, this is gonna be a personalized message, uh, just reaching out to the studio directly, making sure they had a great experience and then also prompting them uh, or kind of reemphasizing that reviews are important and if they could please um, leave a review for the artists that they haven't already. And then also, we also just kind of mentioned in there, put, you know, thanks and glad that we could start generating bookings for you and revenue already. So what that means is that, hey, we're excited that we could generate a return on your time and investment to use studio time. So this definitely goes a long way because it also um, just, we reaffirm our the value that we add and we also, this does help increase the amount of reviews that we get through our platform, which of course in the early days of your marketplace um, are, is super important. So that's gonna be the fourth step. Now the fifth step is going to be to review the artist and user communication and make sure that all the bookings went smoothly and on and there and also to leave a review. So you'll see right there, so the actual kind of like task on that is to send email number four to the artist and the user. So I do want to mention that these aren't just like automated emails. So we actually take the time to do this for everyone during their first time using studio time. So that way we increase uh, not only everyone's, um, you know, the amount of kind of handholding and support so they have the best experience possible, but also we want uh, to create those relationships with both sides and also that expectation that we're here if they need anything. Um, so that way, if there is ever any issue with any booking, that they reach out to us and that we're able to, you know, have that com existing communication with them and be able to help them. So we'll just get to this fourth uh, email really quickly. So this fourth email is going to be the email artist following the first booking. So we're going to reach out to them and say, hey, name, uh, we noticed that you, uh, that you just completed your first booking through Studio Time and we'd love to hear how the session went. If you haven't left a review for a studio, uh, studio yet, please do so when you can. And then we mentioned that we're always looking to hear from our community and how we can improve. So please let us know if you ever need anything or even any studio recommendations in the future. Uh, also feel, feel free to tag us on, uh, on social uh, at any sessions. And then we link to our Instagram right here because that's our primary social channel. We'll be sure to reshare posts and stories to help with visibility. Now there's a lot in this message. The first is typically a lot of these marketplaces um, don't actually reach out to uh, the end user or the users that are booking. So this actually goes a long way because um, people are typically pretty surprised that we actually reach out to them and see how it went. Um, and we don't call it like booking, we call it a session because that's what they're using it for. Um, we also wanna prompt reviews for the studios because reviews are incredibly important to have on listings. And then uh, we also uh, ask for feedback and then mention that uh, you know if they ever need any recommendations for studios, that we're here to help them with that. Now, why we, why we mention that? is that typically artists that are booking through studio times are booking in other cities, uh, you know, so they might have a studio, uh, if they're from LA, uh, you know, they might have a studio here that they typically work out of. But say for instance, they're going to New York City, they might uh, find a, a, the best studio for their needs and where they're going and they might book it through studio time. So they start depending upon studio time uh, for their needs for studios that they don't already know of. So, um, so that's why we mention it because we actually do get a lot of requests of replies to this thread down the road for our that are then ask for specific recommendations. Now, of course, when we send back recommendations, those are some of our best studios and those are studios that we've already had this kind of dialogue with and uh, sent them the messages uh, so that way they can send all this, um, you know, take the time to send back all the artist messages uh, with all the confirmation that we mentioned in the previous steps. So that way when they book those studios down the road, um, these are some of our best studios and that they know how to communicate with artists. And they know how to make sure everyone has the best experience possible on studio time. Now this last part to the message down here is actually, uh, so this is very important for us um, in specific regards to our social and our, our marketing. So uh, a lot of artists um, look at studio time as a credible, uh, a credible brand and a credible name in the music industry. So they love it to tag us in their sessions because if you're an artist and you're in a studio, that means you're working and you're perfecting your craft and you're creating new music. 
So we're a very, uh, very well respected and very trusted uh, brand and name in the industry. So a lot of artists like to tag us because that's kind of like external validation and credibility building on their end, which of course helps build visibility on our end and we help reshare that. So we like to uh, continually kind of share that on our social. So these are the four different emails uh, templates and these are the actual kind of emails that we send um, to both uh, music studios and artists looking to book through our marketplace. But this is basically how we support our marketplace users and this is going to be through their first time using studio time and through every step of the transaction or booking process. So that way we can ensure that both sides had the best experience possible using studio time um, and rely on us in the future for all of their needs for booking music studios. Now, once again, this is a kind of a guide or framework that you can use um, to kind of get started in the earliest uh, stages of your online marketplace. Um, you can easily kind of take this and uh, implement it and start to see what's working and what doesn't and then improve upon it. And then you can kind of take this and expand on it and hopefully kind of build out a support team um, as you look to kind of scale up your marketplace. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, definitely hit the uh, like and hit the subscribe because it uh, keeps me motivated to make these videos. And if you have any questions, you can just uh, comment below to this video and uh, I'll reply in your comment and uh, also do my best to make videos based off of what you want to see next. Thanks.